Hello and welcome. This is a key stage 3 biology video about the adaptations of leaves for photosynthesis. Now, just as a recap, in the video just before this one, we looked at photosynthesis. We said that carbon dioxide diffuses into leaves for this process. Oxygen is a product which diffuses out of the leaves. We said that water was also needed and that went in through the roots. So there's our water going in through the roots. And the whole point of this was to produce a substance called glucose, which was the food for the plant, and it had various uses that we covered previously. We said sunlight is very important for photosynthesis as well. This provides energy for the process to happen. Photosynthesis also happens in a type of living thing called algae and those can be found, or that can be found in water. Carbon dioxide diffuses in from the water, from the water, because there is carbon dioxide in water, and any oxygen produced goes into the water as bubbles of oxygen gas. And you might just be able to make out some bubbles there from the algae that's in the pond drawn there. If we look at our plant on the left there, it's important to remember that the leaves do most of the photosynthesis. The leaves do most of the photosynthesis. These are the organs of photosynthesis. So we're going to look at the adaptations of those leaves. So here is a leaf, a leaf. And one of the key adaptations, key adaptations of the leaf is that it is flat and thin. Or in fact, most leaves are flat and thin, or thin and flat, as I've written there. This is really important because if it's thin and it's flat, we get the quick diffusion of carbon dioxide into the leaf and oxygen out of the leaf. That movement of those gases happens quite quickly because there's only a short distance for them to move in or out of the leaf. The second one is the idea that the leaves are often wide, not only thin and flat, but they're quite wide. And this allows them to absorb more sunlight or to absorb as much sunlight as possible. Because as we said, sunlight is very important for photosynthesis. Now, if we were to look in this direction here, as shown by that little eye, and we magnified what we could see, we could actually take a look at the structure and arrangement of the cells. So just to clarify that a little bit, let's have a look. We've got a little knife, a scalpel. We can slice the leaf there. And then we can take one more very, very thin slice. You could just about see that slice there. There it is. We can transfer that onto a glass slide for our microscope, put a cover slip on it, and we could observe that under the microscope. Now, if you did that, you might see something that looks a bit like this we are going to label the different parts and explain what their functions are. So if you've got the work along sheet that you might have got from the description below, you can just add these sections here. If not, these are the parts that we're going to describe and explain the functions of. Okay, so firstly, we have at the top there on the right hand side, we have a part called the waxy cuticle. This is a waxy layer on the top surface of a lot of leaves. And just below that, we have a layer called the upper epidermis. Upper epidermis. Just below that, we have a bunch of cells that work together. This is called palisade tissue. Palisade tissue. Below that, we have some other cells that make up something called the spongy mesophyll. Spongy mesophyll. Then we have the lower epidermis, the lower epidermis. And then this part here that's in the lower epidermis, this is called a stoma. If you have more than one stoma, or you're talking about more than one stoma, we use the word stomata. So one stoma, many stomata. So these are the parts that we should be able to label and explain what they're about. If we looked at the stomata from underneath, we might see something that looks like this. There's one stoma there. 
but when we look in a 2D version of that where the leaf has been sliced in half, it looks more like what we have on the screen that we've shown that, we, that we're showing there. And that's the part there, that's the stoma that we just saw in the other diagram. So the waxy cuticle, the role of that is to prevent water loss. It's like a waterproof layer, so it prevents water being lost from the leaf. The upper epidermis, this is like a protective layer. So it's there for protection, but also important to remember that it is transparent, transparent. That means it's see-through like glass. The palisade tissue, this is really, really important because it has cells and each of the cells have many chloroplasts. So palisade tissue has many chloroplasts for photosynthesis. For photosynthesis. You re may remember that chloroplasts contain chlorophyll which absorbs the sunlight to allow photosynthesis to happen. So the light comes in from above, passes through the upper epidermis which is transparent and hits that palisade tissue. So there's our light hits that palisade tissue with all its chloroplasts and because there's lots and lots of chloroplasts there as you can see each one with their chlorophyll it's going to absorb a lot of the sunlight so the palisade tissue has not only lots of chloroplasts but it's near the surface that near the top surface of the leaf to absorb maximum sunlight we have the spongy mesophyll next and the spongy mesophyll has air spaces as you can see from the diagram, there's air spaces. And this is really important because the carbon dioxide can easily get to the palisade tissue and oxygen can come through the air spaces and diffuse out of the leaf quite easily as well. So those air spaces are really important. That's, and these air spaces are found in the spongy mesophyll. Then we have the stomata. And these are pores pores, which means tiny holes, which can open and close. These can open and close, and this is really important because they can allow gas exchange to happen. Gas exchange. So the fact that they can open and close controls the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide going in and out of the leaf. One more note to add is that the lower epidermis, this either has no or a very thin waxy cuticle and that's because the amount of uncontrolled water loss from the lower surface of the leaf is a lot less than the top surface so there tends to be less of a waxy cuticle on the bottom so there we have it the adaptations of leaves for photosynthesis if you downloaded the work along sheet you can make these notes on your own sheet if not you can just make them on a piece of paper but lots of very important information about a topic that appears not only in key stage 3 biology but also in GCSC both in combined science and triple science and also all the way up to A level so a very good basic idea of photosynthesis in this video thanks for watching and I'll see you soon